Okay, Mr. Fatur, um, your lecture was a kind of an advertisement for water, nearly, I thought. I mean, seriously, you were kind of looking at water from two perspectives that actually are used in advertising campaigns, like um, soft values, the psychological values, and the techniques, um, which are like the hard values of using the water. You kind of addressed both in your lecture. On the other hand, you come from a company which is um, Ljubljansky Urbanistichny Zat, Ljubljana's Urban uh, Institute, you, you would say, which is uh, one of the biggest urban planning departments in the country. You know, was founded in the 60s, has a long tradition in planning. Um, also, I mean, you kind of access um, in, I guess, in when you do urban planning, I wonder, I mean, how this works. Um, you probably can look at the different systems, um, like the sewage systems, the water systems, the traffic systems, and look for nodes and intersections on, on these uh, points. So, um, do you look at this? I mean, do you take this kind of approaches where plan, uh, um, when planning water in, in, in the urban planning in the city, in the city interventions? Uh, <clears throat> we're mainly we're doing work uh, for the last few, day, few years in Ljubljana. Ljubljana had the, the new master plan in 2010, although it kind of started in almost 2000, so it was all in all, it was like a 10 years process actually about it. Uh, unfortunately, at the time, there was no intervention, to my knowledge, that somebody would connect these dots together. The public spaces, the infrastructure needed, the nodes that actually do exist, and uh, of course the needs of the people. What uh, I live in Berhovci, in Ljubljana, uh, this is the uh, sort of sub-municipality that has none of the, none of the uh, official public space. The only one, I think, actually maybe one more in, in Ljubljana. Uh, and my question, my question always is, uh, we are actually doing with the infrastructure itself. So we are sort of left that you can deal with the infrastructure, but don't go with infrastructure, which is like a technological stuff into the sociological department, which, which is more or less like a public space. So these two things, because of the perception don't mix, but they do mix well. Uh, so, uh, I'm, unfortunately, I have to answer, uh, answer like this. Uh, and hopefully, I'm glad that in the last years, uh, the, these interventions actually in the public space did start to begin, and mainly because of the rainwater. So rainwater was actually the first cause that somebody understood that you have the possibility and ability to do something with this water which will be channeled afterwards somehow, but to do something with it and create a public space using infrastructure in a different way or in a different situation. Um, I uh, lived in the Netherlands, and in the Netherlands you always get this notion that you're close to the water. Basically, you are surrounded with water all the time. Um, on the other hand, I mean, Ljubljana always made this kind of um, approach that the water should be fenced off and um, taken away fr from site. I mean, we put um, the river that, that was flooding Ljubljana, Ljubljana is a river, into a concrete bed. We kind of hide away the water. So, I mean, also uh, in the last um, kind of period, then our new mayor renovated all the squares and the uh, places around Ljubljana is a river. But there is no, um, I mean, okay, th there was some interventions made to bring uh, the river back to the squares, but very kind of small ones, uh, maybe. So um, how to bring the water back to the city? I mean, how to open this uh, window or uh, how to uh, bring uh, the water in Ljubljana closer to the public space? Like, with what kind of interventions? The question is not how to bring water in the public space. The question is what to do to have this bottom-up approach that actually the public space, the users of public space, will be organized in a way that they will sort of contribute 
to the water being closer to them and also use the, the in-between space between the water and fences and everything and the public space. We were discussing uh, with a group that was in, in Bio here when, and everybody said, how strange, there's no way you can enjoy Ljubljanica and Ljubljana. You can enjoy it maybe in the, in the part uh, uh, towards Ternovo, uh, but that's not the city center. So they had no idea how to enjoy Ljubljanica, the river which is there, and they had no idea how to, how to get there except rent a boat or take a boat uh, ride and so on. Uh, to me, uh, there's uh, unfortunately not, no easy solutions for Ljubljanica because Ljubljanica was strictly, uh, it was a technological thing uh, that was done. But I believe that uh, we'll have to have some other and new uses for the embankment. Just have an embankment that you walk through, that's not good enough. This is a don't in the area. You have to have something, some experience, something there. Not the walking, not just sitting there. There has to be some much more interaction there. This is what's missing. But also the squares which were done around it. I mean, you showed one that has no water. There are m many more that were recently renovated and without the usage of water. Uh, again, I'm sorry that this happened, actually. Uh, one of the idea, uh, ideas uh, which are, uh, as Alex said, could be uh, easily accessed, actually, was our idea. There's uh, underground water flowing, actually, at this moment below our feet at this moment. Everywhere in Ljubljana is actually water flowing because we, are, we have a large quantity of water and it's quality water. So uh, this, this is actually some forces are underground and we can represent those forces on the ground. So what we can do in, the, for instance, Novi Turk and Kogrisi Turk, if nothing else, we can tape those forces. We can tape how the water is running. We can make an impression on the surface, and this costs like nothing, but somebody should be interested in it. So I think these interventions, which should be cheap at the beginning, of course, because small steps will go further. The big steps will never go, because you will never be able, I think, uh, after this amount of money that was al already installed in these two squares, that will do something else, something different. So some other means will have to be found, and I believe that we can start only with a, you know, like a, a very wide tape that will be on the floor. Maybe one more question. Um, water is a luxury. Um, what happens if water becomes like oil? You know, some people predict that we will run out of, um, I mean, good drinking water soon. What happens? <clears throat> well, you saw, I'm 65% of water and I have big bones, you know. More, most of you are 62 and 60 percent of water, so you are you are better off <laughs> because you need less water. Uh, well, we'll definitely need water to live. That's no way we can avoid this. Uh, but of course, the consumption of water is much lower now, and this is thank thanks to better technology, to the factories that had to close down, and this is the thing everywhere in Eastern Europe. Uh, but uh, as I said in my lecture, there are, there are definitely some still things to do. And uh, the only thing I think is prevention, the only situation for us is we have to get off the areas that are uh, protect, pr protected for the watersheds. We have to uh, be careful how we do it. For instance, we are, we are discussing three days ago with the municipality of Ljubljana about the new regulations regarding uh, the rainwater. And the question was, should we imply the law in Ljubljana, for instance, that every single house would have to use gray water? That means your water, which is not contaminated with, with, uh, with fecals, to do a sort of recycle another thing. And uh, you know what's the problem? The problem is that we don't have the metering and the, uh, the law legislation, how the water company will charge us with the uh, runoff of the water because this water is actually used twice and then it's combined with rainwater and oh this is a mess. So that was the problem. That shows actually that we are actually not prepared for these steps. So we have quite work still to do. Okay, thank you. Um, on the other hand, um, 
um, Bucharest. It's a quite a different situation. Um, I mean, the demolitions, the nationalizations, the privatization of space. Um, okay, Can, if we start with the users, um, would you say that in a way, um, with the change of the system, that maybe, where maybe, I don't know, in the past, the usage of public space might have been kind of restricted, probably, I imagine. So, are you doing this kind of interventions? I mean, the project, projects, your involvement is to free people to use the space in a more kind of um, free way? In a way, but they are all, always using it. I mean, a lot. Because, uh, as I said, they take it like a resource. But the only thing that we see uh, it's um, a place for uh, us to intervene is they use it for uh, more their own goods. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we don't invent anything. You know, all these tactics of uh, intervention are there already. People are already doing it. But our interventions are trying to uh, open up a little bit more the gap of uh, users who are uh, in involved in this activity. So if a, a person takes a parking place for himself, he's uh, free to take something from the public space. But we are also taking a, a part of the public space, but what we put in place is for more people and without uh, restricting to, to, to many and uh, eliminate some of the mm -hmm. categories. So basically, um, you're talking about, um, okay, um, kind of change in the system that, pro uh, that made uh, the pr privatization of public space um, nearly instantly. So it, it, it happened nearly kind of overnight. And, um, and people had to react to that. So you're basically uh, trying to engage them into more interaction in the public space, as far as I understand. So, um, do you think this need, uh, needs organization? Does the usage of public space needs organization? And how you actually make people to interact? What kind of means do you have to, like, what are the basic rules? Yeah, organization, or you can put it as curating. So, yes, we can create public space by a sort of organization of situations in uh, that people can interact uh, uh, more freely, making a public space for everyone. So that, that was the discussions of yesterday. And uh, I think uh, what we, uh, we are dealing with and what we have to do is to show how these spaces can work, and not on paper, but on real life. So if water was something that was common in the lectures, was uh, uh, for us was not a means to an end, mm -hmm. but is this kind of um, component of public space that has a really a big uh, intuitive quality of use. So you don't have to teach people how to yeah. engage with water. And because on, also in the context of the festival, you have 72 hours to you know, pop up public space without really... Uh, making a drawing to people how to use the public space. And water was the, this kind of, you know, ever, like you, you, Marco was presenting in the lecture, this kind of uh, global uh, medium of people to, to um, connect and to make public space, because we don't make public space, the users are making. We just put the infrastructure there, and because we also, maybe to connect to maybe some of the, the question you asked, Marco, uh, bottom-up uh, kind of initiatives, but also, especially in this case of water, there's also the top-down top approach, and maybe there are very simple, again, without theorizing too much, um, uh, solutions like, you know, this uh, post for firemen. So if this kind of infrastructure exists in the city, you know, it's public water in case of danger. What if we have uh, this kind of other infrastructure for uh, enjoying and using and make your own pool and whatever with public water as a public infrastructure. So it, this is a top-down kind of approach that makes a network and people can access it. And it's not uh, that we specialists have, have to install for them because we, without us and without the street festival, there wouldn't be any water on the street. What if this is something that you can just access, like a, a park? A park is something accessible by itself. So. So basically, um, I mean, you're using really kind of bottom-up approach by looking at the users, how the people use the space, and uh, how you kind of generate uh, some kind of inf infrastructure that makes it possible, that made it, makes the interaction possible. I mean, are any of these projects like visible for the, I mean, 
can they stay there? Like, f I mean, okay, you showed the bench, but yeah. are you interested in like uh, transforming some of these spaces like forever? Like forever, like the National Theater. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, um, a lifespan of the bench, uh, five years, is more than uh, I don't know, like. Uh, a restaurant or a window shop. It, 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 the time is not maybe in a linear way, but it's more like a sort of, uh, as uh, Marco was saying yesterday, in a sort of a sp spiral. Uh, uh. Of course, we are interested to change the practices of the users. And um, so, for example, the bench managed to change the public space around it without too much help from us, but the users kind of uh, accept the rule that was implicit. You know, the rule was not written. You cannot park your car here. You can. But then it is kind of informal negotiation that takes place also without words. You know, it's this kind of people are negotiate like you negotiate on the pedestrian. You watch the driver into the eyes and say it's okay. And then this kind of uh, very intuitively ways of using the public space, uh, they can have a, a lifespan of 30 years. I don't know. I'm, and But maybe it's not so, um, let's say, important to, uh, for example, in the last project uh, that I present on this uh, Sinaya, what is, I think it's important is to get back the people uh, uh, and use the outdoor space. If these objects are consumed because they are from poor materials or whatever, it's not uh, the mean. The mean is that people can really make their public space or be part of it, at least together with administration. And... Um, um, yeah, the, 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 the pool was uh, very short-lived, you know, like insects, but also insects are, uh, that does matter, you know, it's a sort of short life, but still everybody was uh, impressed by the possibility. It's so possible, actually, it's like um, uh, this image with the bedroom suspended into the air, it's, it's there, everybody can do it. Questions from the public, if anyone, okay. Uh, I wanted to ask basically the similar question, but specifically concerning the last project, the community center that you showed. So how is it managed? And specifically, I'm interested, how do you manage? Uh, because I guess there is a will from the participants, for, from the people of the neighborhood to somehow participate in it. So how do you manage it? It's not yet a community center. It's more like um, in the early steps, we kind of... Um identify the potential, so from the last years, there is a physical space that can be filled by this series of organizations, or for these local organizations that are in the city. And also we kind of uh, approach the users and discover that they are very, uh, let's say, uh, interested to this thing to happen. So in this process of uh, uh, subjectivation of the user. So we are in, in, in the moment now that together with the organizations who can uh, play a role in organizing this and together with the users who will use it uh, to, to make the framework of a possible community center. But it's not um, there yet. So it was a temporary community center like the pool. We are in the early phases. Yeah. <laughs> you, you probably challenged the... the a kind of uh, rethinking uh, about many uh, many topics or uh, points of departure today, and uh, as well as well as uh, the, the speakers before today and, and yesterday, and uh, we started with um, the meaning of demolition, and. Um, I think that uh, we are facing uh, demolition after 50s, uh, maybe in smaller scale, here in Ljubljana and Slovenia as well. Um, and um, uh, demolition of, of uh, uh, mentality, of the urban thinking, of, of uh, uh, feeling what the city is. And uh, if we take, for example, all the fences uh, around the city, which are uh, empty, uh, uh, sterile, uh, and no, no functional places, which were uh, set up um, last uh, 40 years, 
as for example, in the, city, in the center of the city, it's a demolition as well. And on, on the other side, uh, maybe um, if, if you say uh, how to, as uh, for example, detail or the, the, the small scale, uh, which is water, what, what is, very, is very important, but how to, close, uh, to, to, to bring water close to the city. Um, we, we had some examples before. Um, we, we can remember the, the Raunikar wanted to, to make a fountain uh, at the at Prashiran Square, and he was accused, and he was uh, he was uh, he was uh, um, uh, make uh, a fool uh, just to 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 think about the water in 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 the center of the city, and there was an article which uh, which was on. On the headlines, uh, said uh, Raunikar, uh, go home, as for example in Jana uh, magazine. But on the other side, Plechnik put uh, some good examples, like, like uh, Makalonsa, as for example, or um, show how to bring the water to, to the city. Um, uh, you, you said it's, it's outside the, the city, but it's not anymore outside the, the city. And um, you used and uh, um, show a lot of examples. We should start from our examples as, as well as from experiences and examples abroad. And as for, uh, I just remember uh, the Utrecht, and the channels in, in Utrecht, where they put the, the next level close to the, to the water, we, didn't, we, 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 we did nothing. Uh, and, but it was possible to, to um, redesign the, the, the city bed, uh, the, the water bed, but uh, we, we lost uh, this uh, um, uh, possibility or, or occasion to do, do something more. Um, which would be very simple. But uh, I think that we have to think and rethink about the, 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 the complexity on one side and uh, small uh, parts of this com comple uh, complexity on the other side. I will just add a thing uh, which is interesting for me. When they were doing the Congress in Turk, there are two pipelines going from Zankara Dom to Ljubljanica because they have the intake for the cooling water and they have the discharge into Ljubljanica back, which means there's always water running. There's always some energy in this water. I'm talking about the, warm, uh, uh, the warmth. So we were discussing if there is maybe a place for an all-year-around fountain. This is the source. Okay, so there is no place <laughs> for all-year-round fountain. But say something about demolition in, uh, in our environment. Uh, you mean the demolition of the urban structure or the... Uh, of the urban the structure, the city, the center of the city, etc., etc. Well, I would first... Yes, I would first say that uh, the problem now is actually that we, I think we did have some politics years ago. Now we don't. Now this is sort of happening with pens down, our pens down, because nobody is actually doing what the special planning and development actually is. You have to have the means and finances, and you have to, the municipalities or the politics, you have to organize things. If you leave this to the investors, and this was what happened in the last 15 years, the investors were the ones who were forcing municipalities or neighbors, whoever there, uh, there was, there was always a conflict, 
uh, because they did have the investment, they did have the money actually, but the problem was of course that they were doing the business, but they were the wrong ones to do the business regarding public space, regarding public infrastructure, and so on. And the, at the moment when we left this out of our hands, like a uh, municipality or state, whatever, uh, whoever is responsible, we put a uh, nail in the coffin, actually, of what's, doing, what's going on now. Okay, so basically we should embrace the public space, fight for it, and um, demand from bottom up. Thank you very much, and uh, there will be a short break. <laughs> <laughs>